So we've been busy finding the antiderivatives, and we uh, have discovered, of course, that when we do that, what we end up with is a family, a family of functions that meet that condition. Here, what we want to figure out is if we take this initial condition and we're looking for a particular solution here, and it it just finally gets us so we can get a very specific equation given the given an antiderivative. So it says find the general solution of this, right? And of course, this is equal. To, this is going to come out equal to f of x plus c. So we're going to start to take the the antiderivative here, but then it asks us. In the particular solution that satisfies the initial condition that f of 1 is equal to 0, and that gives us some other work to do. Let's do the first part first. So let's pursue this a little bit and, and know that this function that we're looking for, f of x, is going to be the antiderivative of 1 over x squared dx, isn't it? Going to do a rewrite, of course, as always. And so when we do our rewrite, hopefully we're going to get the antiderivative of x to the negative second power dx. And then from this one, hopefully we can, you can start to integrate this. So we're going to do our integration here. So we're going to start our integration. Yes. And this is going to be, right, it's going to be x to the negative 1 over negative 1, right? So x to the negative 1 over negative 1, right? Of course, plus this c value. Keep in mind, this c value tells us that there, there can be this constant value here that we're going to have to keep in mind that there are a bunch of parallel functions that, that satisfy this. What this particular solution does is it clarifies the exact value of c in this case. So let's, let's actually finish this up here. And we should get, right, I'm going to clean it up a little bit and get negative 1 over, right, this negative exponent comes down as this, doesn't it? Plus c. And remember, we had this condition so far just like this, don't we? x is greater than, greater than 0. Okay, so here we go. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go back to the condition, and we're just going to write that in, and we're going to say the particular solution we're looking for is when, when x is 1 here. So then we're just going to rebuild this whole thing negative 1 over x plus c, right? And remember, out the other end of it, we want this thing because the condition says that when x is 1, y is 0. Again, x is 1, y is 0. That's where I'm getting that idea from here, right? And now I'm just going to go through and I'm going to substitute. It says here that the value is of x is 1. So I want to take this here and put the value as 1. So now we get negative 1 plus c equals 0. With just a little bit of algebra, we get c is equal to 1. And now we have a very specific equation left, don't we? Now we can say that f of x is still equal to negative 1 over x, but not c anymore because for this particular solution, given the, the f of x value, that they gave us the solution, the point one zero that they gave us, we know that the c value had to be one. So here's our equation. Okay, so we did our regular um, anti-differentiation. Right, we took our antiderivative, we found this function here, this function here, and then from here we took the x y value that they gave us. They said when x is equal to one, y is equal to zero. That was in our our specific solution there, we plug that in and got this value. So this is a question that I think is a really good question because it, it makes us do something. It makes us apply the antiderivative. So good work.